Yeah, if you disagree, why? If you agree, why? Uh, it's simply because uh, work will only need students, only not uh, need students, which is, uh, I think, uh, uh, contradicts to the... Excellent. Uh, we have only, it's the problem. It's very extreme, only. Yeah. What about the teacher? The teacher is also part of yes. the learning teaching process. But here we have pair work and group work will only lead students to learn the mistakes. Sometimes students can learn from there. So you, uh, you disagree, it's not only, the only way. Pair work and group work, that's it? No, it's a good thing to work in pair. It's good to work in pair and group. What about class, whole class? No. And teacher students. But here we have pair work and group work will only, the only one or ones that lead students to learn the mistakes of their colleagues. colleagues. Through pair work, group work, and the whole class. When someone goes to the board, giving a presentation, he or she is going to make mistakes. And his colleagues are going to learn from them. So maybe pair work and group work are the best, but there are other, other forms. Good. Okay. Yes. Uh, number three. Yes. Uh, all mistakes should be corrected. I disagree. Yes. It depends. It depends on your objectives. Yeah. It depends on your objectives. If you are teaching fluency, if you are teaching fluency, then. The mistakes should not be correct. If you are teaching accuracy, then the mistakes should so be correct. So all mistakes. Yeah. Well, or the focus. Yeah, when you start correcting so, so, them, they will yes. not so, practice again. So, so it's a good discussion, so, yeah. Uh, for example, when uh, you correct all the mistakes, uh, I, I, uh, I think you destroy uh, yeah. the students. Yeah. Uh, because he thinks uh, uh, he's nothing. He is, and, yeah, and, uh, he's doing all he's the mistakes. Not that's interesting. Uh, even though you are, uh, your objective is to improve students' accuracy, but here the key term is all mistakes. Yeah. We cannot correct. I give an example. I give an example. You are teaching speaking, okay, and you want to teach students to learn about, uh, let's, let's say, you are teaching function, like uh, apology. Asking for and giving advice or asking for apology and expressing apology. If students um, make mistakes about how to form uh, asking and uh, expressing apology, then I can correct. But if students are going to make mistakes about simple past, I don't care about simple past now because my objective is to teach apology. apology. So I'm going to correct only, not all mistakes. So here, when we say all mistakes, number one, we are going to interrupt students. Then they feel the emotion. So don't correct all mistakes. And therefore they cannot see next time. Yeah. You, as, a, as a teacher, you can take notes uh, of the mistakes that yeah. students make a lot. Okay. And then you can discuss with them. And you can then make uh, another activity to correct uh, those mistakes. All right, interesting. Um, I can't remember, like, there's a technique that some teachers use. Um, like, uh, when, uh, when a student says something which is wrong, you repeat it. Like, you're just making them... You push emphasis on it. Yes, and then he will correct by, in, in, in yes. uh, by himself. Yeah. No, by himself. I think it's a correction or... Yes, it's good. Yes. This is good, right? Yes. Yeah, for example, you ask your students, your students um, um, uh, I mean, um, did you go to school yesterday? Is it? Yes, sir, I go. I go. So but you repeat, you repeat the mistake. I go. And you are waiting for students because you are pushing emphasis on his mistake. Or his. I go. Yeah, I go. You repeat two, three, or three times. Then, if he, the students, couldn't correct it, there is a fear yes. correction. One of the students will. Yeah, and some yeah, will. And sometimes, I agree with her. I yeah. agree. And sometimes he will correct it in. I mean, I'll say, go on, he said, no, 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 I went. Okay. Yeah. No, in case the students couldn't correct the mistake himself, then it's fear correction. What do you think? Go? What do we say? I, I. If they say, I went, that's good. Fear correction. They're correct. But if the students yeah. couldn't, yeah. didn't know what. Teacher, yeah, but don't explain, demonstrate. When you talk a lot, you confuse your students. 
don't, don't explain many things, okay? Demonstrate or just put emphasis on it. And again, it depends on students' level. If you are beginners, if you explain English, you just confuse them, okay? But it's a, it's a good idea, don't say it is a mistake. Indirectly, you correct it, okay? Good. Um, number four. You agree? Uh, if you agree, raise your hand. Disagree. No, but here, you agree or disagree? I disagree. No, I disagree. You disagree. Uh, let's repeat again. What the learners say is not important. It's only important that they speak accurately. Yeah, always. Uh, only. Okay. Good. Uh, it, it sounds like we don't agree. But I like the idea it depends. It depends on your learners. I give you an example. Now, when you are teaching second back, second back, even class, are you going to focus on fluency or cursing? Because they, are, they have got written exam, not spoken exam. So it depends on my learners. But if I'm teaching a formal context, where speaking, writing, all the other skills, accuracy like are important, then I disagree. Okay, now if I'm preparing students, they get their back, now they are going to take the entrance exam at the university. But basically, the majority won't have poor exam, they won't have only multiple choice answers written. It is okay, I agree, because the focus is on accuracy. You see? Yes. If I'm teaching students who are going to go abroad, and they like to, um, to do tourism, I mean. They need communication. They need, they need to fluency. communicate. The yes. focus yes. is on fluency. So I don't agree. Exactly. Yeah. It depends on the learner. It's really very really interesting this guy, and this is what happens to many teachers. Some they focus only on accuracy, that's why you see or you find their learners are very good at writing. But when this comes to speaking activities, they feel blocked. They cannot. That's why here the purpose behind this listen, speaking skill, is to strike a balance and to be aware of your objectives and learners' needs. Yeah. Um, what are you teaching? What learners you are teaching? Are you teaching learners um, who are in need of accuracy more than fluency or both? In general, you strike a balance. You strike a balance between the two, the two um, principles, I mean, fluency and accuracy. However, when you are teaching in your classes, you may find that they are not good at, at, uh, at speaking fluently. Okay. So what do you do? You design activities that is based on fluency or vice versa. Okay. But at the end of the year, students must be good at fluency and fluency.